So that's basically how I make my drums. It's really just about the right samples, getting a nice groove. Hey guys, welcome to the vlog. Today is a special day. As you know, it's Friday. My song just got released right after midnight. I'm doing everything to promote it as good as possible on all of my socials. Also getting in touch with all of the people that helped me to promote it. People that do reposts on SoundCloud, YouTube channels that were posted maybe tomorrow or in two or three days. As well as people that I know that have Spotify playlists so that they promote my song by adding it to their playlist and showcasing it to their followers. That's by far the best way to get more plays on Spotify. It's actually the only one except for making a good track and hoping that the algorithm picks it up and also hoping that the Spotify curators will put it into their playlist. Tomorrow or late tonight I will have more information about the song. The first stats will be then available for me. If you haven't checked out the song yet, the link is down below in the description and at the end of the video you can check out yesterday's video where I explain how the song was made like from start to the release actually. So basically the only thing left to do for me is heading over to the studio and just working on the next one. I already know I will regret the next part, but it's just so much faster and fun. This was fun, but also extremely cold. I hope this tomato soup will help to warm up, to be ready to make new beats. That's usually what I start with, my songs. It's always like making the drums. While the soup is cooling off, I can already tell you that your drum sound will be like 100% dependent on your drum samples. If you have good samples, if you have a good sample library, if you build that up over the years and collect the drums, the kicks, the claps and snares that just work for your sounds, you will have a big advantage and just work faster, better, and it will also help to develop your own style if you reuse the, the same drum sounds. So if you don't have it already, start immediately making like a folder somewhere on your computer where you collect those samples. You could also sample drum elements from other songs. That's kind of allowed because no one will actually hear where it comes from. So it's okay, it's done a lot. You won't get into trouble. And of course, if you're interested, I also made some sample packs. The samples that I use that I collected over the past 10 years, they're all available as a free download. The link is down below in the description. Now Soup and then Logic. I already started working on drums. Pretty simple so far, it's a four to the floor or house beat, no fancy future bass half beat kind of stuff this time. That's what I got so far. I'm using guys to program my drums. It's super simple and easy. Wherever you put a block, there's like the sample being played. At the bottom, we have like the kick drum fall to the floor. Then on top of that, I like the clap on two and four. That's like the most standard house beat four to the floor. You have a kick on every hit and the clap and two and three. And it sounds pretty much like this. Pretty simple. If you do that, you have like the basic formula for every EDM four to the floor song. On top of that, I've added a hat. It just sits on top of the kick and gives a little bit of emphasis, helps to stabilize the groove and also for the kick to cut through the mix. Because if you have a lot of drum elements going on, the kick sometimes disappears in the song, gets a little bit lost and having something on top that emphasizes it definitely helps to keep up this four to the floor groove. Then also very typical is like an off hi-hat. You just put it in between of the kicks. It has a very jacky feel, also extremely typical for house music. Next up, I have a shaker loop in the song. With shakers, it's hard to program them because they will never sound like a human played them. They sound very robotic if you just make them in the computer. With the kick, clap and the off hi-hat, it doesn't matter that much. But with the shaker, I would definitely always go for a loop. So in this case, I used one from a sample library. It sounds like this. I also already added a bass line.
very simple. I already used a very similar one also on another track. It has a nice tone to it and the rest of the song is still work in progress. Then once you have the drum beat laid out, the simple one, you start with the EQing. I can definitely recommend you to cut away the low end on every single element, maybe except for the kick, but even on the kick I cut away at around 30 hertz the snare maybe right around 80 hertz it really depends on the sound i think here i cut it away quite a lot i've layered two snares two claps but both of them i cued quite heavily because it just fitted to this song it doesn't mean that it always will fit cutting that much sometimes you need to cut way less especially if you make a song that isn't four to the floor where you have like kick clap or kick snare and underneath of the snare no kick you can definitely give the snare more of the bottom end because there is no kick playing at the same time hi-hats you can cut them quite high i went here to 1600 hertz and i also removed one of the resonating frequencies how to do that i already explained in another video what i also really love is using a sample delay i delay one of the two channels left or right by a couple of milliseconds this will give you the impression that the sound is really wide instead of being mono in the middle and it helps me just to get the mix all right usually like the clap i make it wide to have more room in the middle for the vocals and for the kick and bass the s1 imager is a similar tool it also makes things wide it sounds a little different than using the sample delay you can't use it on things that are mono you need something that already has a stereo signal and then you can make it wider if it's in mono if you have a head in mono and you want to make it wide use a simple sample delay reverb is so crucial when it comes to drums especially like keeping up the groove of a house drum four to the floor groove if you don't have reverb on top of the clap or snare it will just sound really dry and not glued together i have on every single element of my drum grooves and loops i have a reverb on the kick i don't use the reverb sometimes on the top part of the kick if i want to go for an 80s kind of funky feel but for the more electronic kinds of music i just leave it out i definitely have a medium sized reverb on the clap i usually use the valhalla vintage verb i've set it here to 1.7 seconds which is quite long I usually go for like 0.7 but it really depends on the song also on the mix on the reverb don't forget to EQ your reverbs you can also cut there the low end away to keep your track from getting muddy and on the hats for example I also use a reverb but a different one just one that gives it a little bit of ambience so that you barely hear that there is a reverb on top of it so that it sounds natural because dry things sound very unnatural because that's not what our human ears are used to we always hear some sort of form of reverb if we're in a place without reverb it will just freak us out so always have a little bit of reverb on basically everything maybe except for the kick but for the hi-hats and everything just like a small ambient reverb there are a lot of presets available in this case i've used an ambient played reverb plugin so that's basically how i make my drums it's really just about the right samples getting a nice groove maybe shifting the clap and snare a couple of milliseconds to the front to have like a nicer groove getting the right reverb making the right things wide with stereo spreading and you can also use panning to make it sound more like a live drum set because if you listen to live drums like the heads are in different positions and you can kind of mimic that in your DAW by shifting maybe the hi-hats to the left the, the rims or cymbals or the shakers to the left and like spread them out in the stereo field just don't make it too hectic test it also with headphones it might work and sound good in your studio but not on headphones it might be like too much and just make you crazy what also helps is parallel compression you apply it to the entire drum bus you put a compressor on top and heavily over compress it and then just mix maybe five to ten percent of that heavily compressed signal back into your into your chain so that you have like the, the drums plus the heavily compressed by five percent this will give you a compressed sound without actually compressing it too much it's a little trick if you want to know in detail how it works i also already explained that but if you're just starting out don't don't start with parallel compression it's it's a little complicated and you need a really trained ear to hear what it actually does and not over compressing and actually ruining the dynamic of your drums I have to say I'm at the moment a little frustrated my computer is again spinning like crazy 
I thought I've solved it by putting new thermal paste on top and cleaning it up, but, but it starts again like doing this overheating. I might try out to apply again thermal paste or do whatever with it, but it's really frustrating. And on top of that, some have already recognized that yesterday I, I turned one of my speakers around because uh, there is, seems to be something not working. At the moment, one of the speakers doesn't really work fully. It sometimes works, sometimes not. I don't know what it is. So this one works, but this one not, no sound. I don't know if you can hear it with just a mono mic, but producing with one speaker is, is impossible. There is no way. And I don't know what it is. I checked all of the cables, checked the sound card, checked the speakers, switched everything, tested. I don't know. And it's, it's not always, it's like just sometimes. So maybe after 10 years, it's time for new speakers. I don't know. I will, I will check it tomorrow again and see what it is and trying to solve this mystery. All done with work. I also uploaded the song to SoundCloud. It's now also available there. And as always, I'm in a hurry, invited to a birthday. It's Friday evening, so let's run. Running through the dark in a summer storm. Summer storm. Reaching for my hand like don't let me go. The color of your eyes turn black and white. Black and white. I don't know how, but I, I made it in time. I'm just, yeah, one minute late. That's good. That's extremely good. Now picking up Vanessa from work. That's the best part about Vanessa's job. They always have snacks. Did you already listen to my new release? Of course. Yeah. Sorry. Not? No. And now her parents are taking us to the party. That means I can drink. Switching again the car, don't ask me why. So we have a car for tomorrow and Sunday. Okay, that's the reason. You see, I, I don't even ask anymore, I just follow. I played Vanessa's parents my new song. I think they liked it. Pre-partying. Now it's time for the real party. Ready for party? Yes. But no drinking for you. Yes. More drinking for me. One quick tip, never ever eat tomato soup in your studio. It's a big mess, trust me. 